Hola. Hola. No. ¿Sí? Sí, ahora sí. Hola, ¿qué tal? Mira, eh... Solo, Rosa, un momentito. Eh, solo comentaros una cosa. Eh, Let me just briefly say something. We're running a bit late, I'm afraid. Not more than 10 minutes uh, at most. So we'll be starting the press conference by then. It, things are going to go as follows. The chair of the delegation, Monica Holmeyer, is going to make an initial statement on behalf of the entire delegation, 10 members of the European Parliament. She's going to make that statement in... English, and then she'll be answering questions in German. You have interpretation in English and Spanish. And then, if you want to speak to the other members of the delegation from the different political groups, we'll do that afterwards. So we'll do that on the floor above where you came in. So we're going to have this press conference just with Mrs. Holmeyer, and then we'll go upstairs and you'll be able to talk to the other members of the European Parliament so that you can gather other points of view. So that's how things are going to go. Thank you.
So, welcome to all the to journey. Into <laughs> Bueno, buenos días. Eh, perdonaré un poco de retraso. Good afternoon. Apologies for the slight delay, but here we are. We can now begin our press conference now. As you're aware, this is a delegation made up of 10 MEPs from the Budgetary Control Committee of the European Parliament. The chair of the delegation, Monica Holmeyer, will be speaking in English on behalf of the entire delegation. You have interpretation. And then there'll be time for questions. So please, Mrs. Holmer. Yes. So first, welcome to all journalists and media today. First, I would like to present you the delegation um, of the Budgetary Control Committee of the European Parliament. So um, here in the first row are sitting the two vice presidents, Katarina Kinici and Isabel Garcia Munoz. Then, um, as a member of the Budgetary Control Committee, we have Jose Manuel Fernandez and Jorge Buxade Villalba. Then we have uh, very good colleagues and competent colleagues of different other um, committees, like the Econ Committee, so responsible for the Recovery Fund, and from the Budget Committee, the coordinator, Aida Gardia Sabal. Um, and, uh, the colleague Fernandez is the coordinator for EPP in the Budget uh, Committee, but he's member in the Con Committee either. Then we have Isabel Benjumea. Ben then we have the colleague Eva Maria Popcheva, uh, Susana Solis Perez, and Ernest Ultason. So um, I'm reading out now the statement of the whole delegation. Um, Spain was the first country to receive a performance-based payment from the Recovery and Resilience Facility and is presented as a front-runner in the implementation of the funds. All stakeholders see the Recovery and Resilience Facility as an historic opportunity to carry out investments and reforms. The Budgetary Control Committee wanted to see how milestones and targets of the recovery and resilience facility are fulfilled and how the funds are being implemented, how it is made sure that the funds are spent well and the, the EU financial interests are protected. We have met with a lot of stakeholders that are involved or follow the implementation of the recovery plan in Spain. And I want to thank everybody for the openness and constructive criticism. The facility is a new and complex instrument that is very demanding, both for the Spanish authorities, the Commission, and the Spanish recipients of the funds, and last but not least, the European Parliament. One of the priorities of this committee is to ensure transparency. The Spanish government informed that almost all the information is published. But we have found that a lot of data is available, but difficult to be found for the public and the journalists. There are reports published every three months and a web page where different documents, a lot of different documents, are published. We recommend to the Spanish authorities to ensure that the information on project payments and reforms is published in a more timely, structured and accessible manner, including information on the final recipients of the funds. We have also found that the control system, COFI, and the Minerva system, to avoid conflict of interest, are operational, functional and mostly implemented by now. Uh, there, it suffered from a little delay, but it's operational now. It is a strong technical internal tool for auditing and control of the expenditure by the central government. We acknowledge the strong efforts of Spanish authorities to put this system in place. We strongly recommend to the Spanish government to facilitate its interoperability with other systems, such as Phoenix, that's the EU system, and regional IT tools, and ensure that it can contribute to the publication of useful data at a larger level. 
An example to follow can be the Cohesio platform, which allows for excellent traceability and allows for easy access to the, informa uh, to the information for everybody. We also recommend to the Spanish authorities that the Court of Auditors is given permanent access to the control systems in order to ensure that they are able to fulfill their mandate. Concerning the European Public Pro uh, Prosecutor Office, shortly called EPO, and the European Anti-Fraud Office, shortly called OLAF, we um, have also discussed the ongoing issues with the Spanish authorities, including problems related um, to their access to data. The methods to ensure that suspicious of, uh, offenses, specifically relating to recovery and resilience funds, are reported to the European Public Prosecutor's Office and the European Anti-Fraud Office, and the establishment of contact points. We rely on a strong cooperation from the Spanish authorities. From our conversations with regional governments, civil society, business and other partners, we have learned that the current implementation of the funds should be more flexible. Administrative burden is a common complaint by the stakeholders. We are committed to the highest standard of quality and control, and we have transmitted these concerns to the European Commission and the Spanish authorities with the aim to ensure that the funds reach the citizens and the economy in a quick, safe, and performing way. We were informed about very complex tenders and very bureaucratic procedures. There is a need to provide additional resources and technical support to ensure the, Swiss, uh, the swift implementation of the plan, um, especially give, given the intention to request additional funding. There is a need to remove impediments to give more support uh, to self-employed and SMEs, which play a key role in the Spanish economy, and to guarantee a fair, fast, and comprehensive access the recovery um, to the recovery and resilience facility without one moment there is a room which play a key role in the Spanish economy and to guarantee a fair fast and comprehensive access to the recovery and resilience facility without endangering the financial interest of the EU we support the call to reinforce the public private cooperation as a way to accelerate the implementation of the funds the Cont Committee has a zero tolerance against corruption and has inquired to the government about the recent changes to the penal code. We ask the Spanish government to guarantee that its legislation is aligned with the principle of zero tolerance and to ensure, ensure that there is no exception. Finally, we also wanted to support the approach of co-governance and the involvement of the regions and the relevant stakeholders in the design and implementation of the recovery and resilience facility. We were informed by the Spanish authorities about their strong efforts in this area, but we have found in our hearings that several of the autonomous communities complain about their proposals not being taken into account. We wanted to take this opportunity to call on both the central and regional governments to deepen their dialogues and cooperation in order to ensure the success of this instrument and we recommend to the Spanish government to enhance the role of co-governance with all regions and stakeholders. Today we have had a very comprehensive discussion with the competent authorities and the University of Madrid about the excellent project the Spain Neurotech Center. It is a great example of collaboration and success at all levels. Union with a funding of 70 million euro, national with a funding of 50 million euro, and regional with a funding of 78 million euro. This project with substantive funding from, uh, uh, from three sources and future funding from public and private sources uh, 200 million and 200 million at the end, this will be 400 billion, will create a lighthouse project with international relevance for the Union, and it's a lighthouse project for the RRF.
We will follow up on all the information we have received during our visit and we will consider it for the ongoing discharge of the European Commission as well as the ongoing work of the committee in the assessment of the implementation of the recovery and resilience facility. So thank you very much. Bueno, muchas gracias por Thank you very much for that statement from the delegation as a whole. Let's now go into the question. So please say your name and the media you're working for, please. First question. Sí, buenos días, Alonso Soto. Um, yeah, to, uh, to the lawmaker, to Holmaya. Uh, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions. The first one is, you're saying that coffee is operational. Um, so I'm wondering why we don't still have much information about the use of the fund so far. If it is operational, why is it taking so long, if you have any answers for that? Um, also, when it comes into the change of the crime of mal malfeasance, I'm wondering what is your main concern there? What is the problem? Could that really lead into problems with the distribution of, of the money? Um, and I'm wondering how so far Spain compares to other countries. If you guys have done a, a job of surveillance, of monitoring, how does Spain really compare to others like Italy, for example? Thanks. So it's next amount some coffees. Okay, on the coffee control system first. The coffee system took a while to get up and running, but in the finance ministry yesterday, we heard that it's now operational, and uh, that all the data is there, that it's functional, and the ministry told us that. Uh, at the beginning, there were minor technical issues. That's always the case when you have a new system. It always takes time before things are working appropriately. There are always uh, technical issues. So then there are lots of updates that are needed as well. So there are difficulties sometimes at the start. But the system is now operational. And from the regions, we heard that they do sometimes have difficulties, the greatest difficulty seems to be that there's still a lack of interoperability with other systems. So that means that sometimes data has to be entered twice over and that obviously leads to more work. But regions do have the possibility to upload data into the coffee system directly and then it is placed in Phoenix, the European database, from the coffee system. So the question, uh, the system is working. Now, it's an internal system to answer your question. So it's used exclusively to monitor and control the projects and the implementation of the RRF via the ministries responsible, essentially the finance ministry first and foremost. The system contains data that aren't intended for publication. They come under data protection rules. So our recommendation is that you could get digital information generated, which can be published. Now, there are already platforms which you can call the data up on, but uh, specific searches for journalists are difficult as they are for the general public. So you really need to be an expert to deal with it. And I know what I'm talking about here because uh, during recent months I've constantly tried to have access and journalists have also told us about the difficulties they've found. So our recommendation is that yes, the coffee system functions for internal controls. The data is entered, data on tenders and projects. And all that data should also go into a public database. There's a web page that you can find more information on as well. That's something that's been set up by the Spanish government. But there isn't any follow-up for the, of the flow of payments possible at the moment. 
that isn't possible for the general public at the moment. We would suggest setting up something like Cohesio because that's a platform developed by the European Commission and there you can click on a region and then you can see which projects are being undertaken in that region, how much support has been provided, etc. So that's information that isn't yet available here in Spain. That's something that we would recommend. We would recommend there be easier access to information for journalists and for members of the general public who are interested. Now, on uh, the uh, criminal code, we asked the Spanish government to ensure that the Budgetary Control Committee can have an instant uh, and comprehensive look view of Spanish law. Now, there are all sorts of crimes covered in the Spanish criminal code, uh, including embezzlement and other financial crimes, so that's good. But uh, there shouldn't be any exceptions to the sanctions that are required for people who carry out fraud. I mean, we in the Budgetary Control Committee have a zero tolerance approach. That's something that we tell all governments and we would ask the Spanish government to fully stick to the same line as the Budgetary Control Committee of the European Parliament. So they have told us that they will do that and I expect them to see that line fully represented in legislation. And then with regard to where Spain is at the moment, I look to the Commission, but I think uh, Spain is the country that was quickest at applying for the money. They've made major efforts in implementation as well. The project that we saw today, for example, really was impressive. It brings several stakeholders together. Obviously, it needs to be guaranteed that it's sustainable and that's not always easy. I mean, I'm from Germany. Uh, we have the federal states and central government system there. Here you have the central government and the regions. And so some regions perhaps uh, find it slightly more difficult to uh, agree the legislation and to ensure things are going well and to negotiate everything. Some regions are still finding that a bit difficult. We heard some complaints, so please ensure that co-governance works appropriately. But Spain is in the lead in receiving funds and it's also received the most funding. Now, we actually came here, of course, because uh, Spain was the first country to receive funding and we're dealing with the discharge procedure for 2021 and uh, that's why we came to visit Spain. Now, we also visited Italy. They've begun implementation. They're finding similar problems uh, to those that you're finding here in Spain. Complexity in terms of tenders, a lot of red tape, bureaucracy. And uh, a call from my side would be that if you want full implementation, you need an appropriate and sufficiently well-resourced uh, administration so that you can properly implement these programs. There's a lot of money being administered here and it's not easy to do that with the same administration that you had before. So uh, I think uh, everyone has to think about that, whether Italy or Spain. Any further questions, please? You'll be past the microphone in just a moment. Sí, muchas gracias. Mercedes Arrayer de Voz Populi. Thank you. I'm from Vox Populi. I wanted to ask a bit more about the question of malfeasance, embezzlement. I wonder whether you have been in touch with the commissioners, such as Commissioner Reinders, who has made some remarks on this, and I wonder what you think he would make of your recommendations. As to the information that is being distributed, we do understand that there have been accessibility issues. I wonder if you've had any responses in terms of the implementation in regional in the regions where there has not been information forthcoming since August 2021. And finally, there has been some speculation about whether the Commission has exerted 
any pressure on you not to make excessively critical remarks. We could perhaps take another question at the same time. We could uh, save time if we took more than one question at once and ask the chairman to respond to them together. Sí, gracias. Eh, Andrés. Thank you, Anders Hilte from Apuntoes. I wanted to ask a bit more about some of the points that you've already raised. Uh, you said that, that it didn't appear that there had been any breaches of the regulation, the uh, next gen regulation, which was adopted by the, the Council and the Parliament. Could you expand on that? I have seen that there have not been any breaches of this legislation. Could you confirm that? Is that in line with the recommendations that you are making? Rec making recommendations might suggest that everything isn't as it should be. Then on the question of embezzlement, I think you have legislation in Germany which is a bit similar to the recommendations the Spanish government is currently making to amend the legislation. Could you comment on that? So, zunächst einmal, um, zu Thank you. First of all, on the rule of law questions that you've raised, Commissioner Reinders indeed has made some remarks. And just to try to clarify the position, it is as follows. The Commission is looking at the situation in all the member states, not just Spain. There's a rule of law report done on every member state. And in that context, specific issues can be raised be for discussion between the Commission and the member states pertaining to rule of law and compliance with the rule of law in the country in question. Commissioner Reinders has no doubt had discussions with the Spanish government and will no doubt have further discussions with them. In this context, we do not wish particularly to intervene in issues of criminal law in Spain or changes to the rule of law or the criminal code. It's simply a question of making the point that we have a zero tolerance position on any kind of corruption or malfeasance in our committee. So we're therefore waiting to hear more from the Commission as to their position, any points they might want to raise, any recommendations they might make. The points which the Commission wishes to raise will actually go to the LIBE, the Civil Liberties Committee, not to our committee, because that's a committee that's competent for rule of law issues. We're the Budget Control Committee, and it is really on questions of auditing and control that we would be competent. It would be if there had been some kind of serious breach of the conditionality mechanism or a violation of one of those provisions that we would have a role to play. So to that extent, we simply await the outcome of further discussions between the Commission and the Spanish government and a report to the Libya Committee, possibly. In terms of budget implementation, we haven't got all the full details as yet, of course, and therefore we're not in a position to say that we have gone through the budgetary implementation with a fine tooth comb. We have not been able to examine all the final details of the RRF funding distribution down to the final recipients. This is partly because of the nature of the instrument itself. The RRF provides that the money is drawn down on the basis of compliance with milestones and targets. This has a number of implications. Inter alia, in Spain, there have been some reform plans put forward which are not actually onerous in financial terms, but do entail uh, trans the transfer of some funds. And therefore, these need to be looked at individually in the context of the national legislation. The Commission is nodding to this that because this is part of the implementation of the national plan. Here in Spain, of course, all the relevant stakeholders across the regions and others will be involved. So this is a step-by-step -step process. The implementation takes place in this way and is ongoing. Are the recommendations that we are making, as I said at the outset, really lie in the area of suggesting measures to make the information more readily accessible so that it is easier to find out who the recipients are, where the money is going and being spent so that the public 
and journalists can have access to this information. The information is there, it's just difficult to access in the current format because the coffee coffee system, which contains all the data, is very, very detailed. There are millions of data items containing it, including all the final recipients and all the payments, but it is not easy to get any kind of overview and this makes it actually less than fully transparent because it's just too difficult to elicit from the system the way it is the facts that you might be interested to ascertain. Therefore, you can't ascertain where the projects are being uh, carried out, which regions necessarily are involved, what other regions may be doing, who the final recipients are. Actually, it makes it difficult for the regions themselves to learn from what in English is called best practice, the chairman says. And, and that actually is an important aspect of transparency and is something which I think it, once this can be achieved, will actually make a big contribution to drawing forward the achievements in the project. We're not here to be critical. We're here to be open, to have discussions on a frank and sincere basis. Everybody was free to ask the questions they wanted. We, I am the chairman of the Budget Control Committee, and I'm happy to say that the Commission was here in all our meetings, and they have, the Commission has participated in all of our, the meetings that we've had here, but of course our role is to be critically vigilant about the work that's done in the Member States and in the Commission. We're not always in an easy position. As a result, you will understand. But our role is to approach things with a critical eye and to be quite rigorous in that way. And the Commission would never have in, in, never intended or even conceived of trying to exert any pressure on us not to be too critical. They know that that is our rule. This is a mission which is not just specifically designed to look at any kind of violations. It is true that there has been one milestone that hasn't been fully attained. The pensions reform should have been fully presented at the end of 2020. The Spanish government sought an extension, so this milestone, contrary to being fully completed, is not fully completed, but the RRF is a construct which is evolving on an evolving basis. There, we have not found any evidence of any sort of deception or fraud. We have had references from some investigative journalists, one in particular, to a tender where some kind of critical comments may possibly have been made at some point. That's something which we will discuss further with the Commission, but our view on it at the moment is that the Commission itself will be more than able to deal with the facts and make any necessary references to the Court of Justice and review the payments. So if you are asking me if we've identified any cases of fraud, no, that's not what we came for and the RRF actually is not far enough down the line for us to do that. In any event, any issues of fraud would be referred to the EPPO. That's the level where such implementation would be um, dealt with. We're talking about three-figure billions of funds that in this programme and you're always going to find attempt at malfeasance and that's something the Commission and the Member States are acutely aware of. They know that we need to have preventive instruments and that's exactly what Minerva is intended to be. The Minerva system was specifically designed to be an automated AI-based system to flag up conference or, uh, potential conflicts of interest. The coffee system enables a broad overview of, for the, of the issues and for the central control authorities and the ministries and others, and it should enable identification of any dual financing, any double spending. So there are a number of mechanisms which are in place here and are used, but it is true that yeah, there's no way around it that throughout the European Union it is not possible to avoid having criminals avoiding trying to get their hands on this money. Caterina Kinici is from Italy. She's an experienced judge from Sicily. She could tell you chapter and verse about uh, the, in the um, imaginative in ingenuity of, of criminals who try to exploit European funding. That's just life for the European Union. And despite the 
stringent control mechanisms we put in place and the rigor of these systems, there are exceptions. There are people who find a way to get around them. They can be abused, but if we are rigorous, as we are, then, and this is the uh, corollary of it, then it's going to take a certain amount of time. And it also means that tenders have to be properly compiled, properly submitted, so th that we reduce to an absolute minimum the chance of any sort of abuse. But in any event, we're here to learn from you. You have learned from us. Germany is just another member state with its own rules, and we're implementing the RRF in our own way. I criticize what is happening in Germany sometimes in terms of the digitalization of the information systems. We were talking about this with the Court of Auditors not so long ago. We had a specific budget discharge report on that on two countries, Germany and the Netherlands, precisely on digital information transfer and th the arachnid system and these two countries we have recommended take remedial action because they are not complying with the regulations as they should. You'll know that I am a German, I chair the Budget Control Committee and I would say the rules apply equally to everybody. Okay, a question there at the back. Thank you, Madam Holmeyer. Medio, por favor, te puedes presentar, oh, medio. Yes. Could you tell us your media? And I'm from Europe Media. Specifically, we would like to ask you about one program in which we have covered the most ground here in Spain. Over the last 14 months, more than 500 million euros of the money has been spent on Kit Digital by the Ministry of Economy and Digital Transition. Last year, in the month of May, it was reported that the Ministry had started its own anti-fraud program monitoring the usage of this money for this specific program. My question, in your meeting yesterday with the Ministry of Economy and Digital Transition, did you discuss with them the findings of their anti-fraud monitor? And my second question, in less than seven days, you're going back to your committee and you are holding your next meeting, all the members, all the honorable members of the committee. What is one good thing that you're going to share at that meeting about what we are doing here in Spain? If you could kindly share with us in advance, we'd be grateful. Thanks, ma'am. Más preguntas? Otra? Sí. Other questions? Yes, please. Aquí, segunda fila. Second row. Buenos días, Patricia Budino. Good morning, Patricia Budino. Patricia Budino for Economía Digital now on the report that you've given us this morning, would you say that Spain is or isn't a reference point when it comes to designing projects and uh, implementing European funding? And then a second question, what happens now with the delegation? Is there going to be a report? Is there going to be a contribution? Are there going to be contributions made by the other members of the European Parliament who are represented on the delegation? Are there some adjustment measures that Spain is going to be recommended to take? Could you explain what happens next? Thank you. Also, zunächst einmal zum Kit. Okay, on the digital kit program. That was a program that was presented to us, and it was presented as a tool to identify who beneficiaries are. And we were told that the coffee control system, we were told about that system and the Minerva system. We don't didn't hear about any other systems. I mean, we got the impression that uh, both these systems are modern in nature. And uh, like every system at the start, they had some minor problems. I mean, when you introduce new systems, then you do have problems. We had the same in the European Parliament when we introduced new systems during Corona, for example. But uh, we, when it comes to programs, the program, we talked to the team who deal with the digital kit program and uh, they said that perhaps there should be more support for it because uh, small and very small businesses really struggle to have access to the program and to get digitalized. So uh, the request was that the program should be made more sustainable and have a longer duration so that SMEs and also the self-employed 
could have a more sustainable form of digitalization rather than simply having a one-off payment. So those were concerns that were transferred for, uh, to us. We didn't really get information on any other kinds of control or monitoring systems. Now, an, an answer that will go to both journalists, what are we going to do subsequent to this visit? Well, we're going to look at what we heard during all the hearings. The European Court of Auditors and the European Commission were present on this mission with us. They have noted all the questions and complaints received, so there, I'm sure, will be a series of recommendations to deal with complaints that will emerge in our discharge report. And as a delegation, we've decided that we are going to conclude on the discharge report next week, and all members will have the opportunity to make contributions emerging from this visit and there will also be a delegation report which will be publicly available and uh, that will be presented in the aforementioned budgetary control committee meeting and it's going to be voted through adopted by uh, all members of the committee now is spain a model for other countries. Well, I have to grin here because uh, I'm from Bavaria and uh, everyone knows, uh, of course, that Bavaria is the greatest region of uh, Germany. I mean, when I was in Italy, I heard that Italy was uh, the template for the rest of Europe. Here I hear it's Spain. We're going to be going to France soon and I'm sure we'll hear that France is the template for the rest of Europe. But uh, what's impressed me is the commitment with which member states are looking to implement the RR if they really want to fully benefit from the opportunity. Now, obviously, there are some mistakes made. There are party political differences. I mean, that is clearly going to be the case. We have a lie. We live in a lively democracy, and there are different views. But I'm actually more impressed with how everyone in countries that have received high amounts of money is really committed to trying to achieve added value out of the RRF. I mean, I can't really say whether Spain is doing the best or not, because otherwise if I say anything, then uh, the Italians might be uh, get annoyed, the French might get annoyed. I mean, we're talking about 70 billion euros overall here and so the point is to have added value more social stability more security for the future more competitiveness more jobs messed better uh, situations in terms of science and research and innovation so that's what we're interested in here i mean we we were curious to come here and see what was going on i mean we're not necessarily here to criticize i mean we are here though to bring up difficult subjects where there are problems to improve things but Essentially, we're here to try and ensure that the program runs as smoothly and as effectively as possible. The last two questions now, please, at the back there. Sí, hola, buenas. Good morning. I'm uh, Deportillo from Expansión. I wanted to ask you a couple of things, for example, about the delays in implementing coffee. Could you tell us a bit more in detail about when you think the information that's been uploaded will be fully accessible, that there will be full traceability and it will be possible to trace all the payments? And could you also say whether you think that the delay is serious? Then another question, please, on the implementation of the payments. Have you detected any particular issues or administrative or bureaucratic hurdles? And if so, do you think that they're a function of the central state or the autonomous communities, the regions, or at what level? Thank you. And we'll have one last question at the back. I'm sorry, there are an awful lot of questions and we only have one hour. Hola, ¿qué tal? I'm Ingrid from Información. 
and I wanted to ask you two questions, please. One is whether you have any estimates on how much of the money coming to Spain depends on the pension reform in, um, implementation, the sustainability, and whether you think the ministry has given adequate guarantees. And then secondly, on this particular visit, have you will you be going home with more questions in mind or more certainty? Uh, we will have one final question. This is the absolute last question here in the front. Uh, Jesús Rodríguez from El País. I've heard very moderate tones from you in your statement, your report on the delegation's visit. It's been very conciliatory overall. I just want to ask you, obviously you haven't been able to do everything you might have wanted. Have you felt that you've got satisfactory explanations about the traceability of the funding, where the money is and where it's going? And have you changed your view since you came, now that your visit is coming to an end? Thank you. First of all, on coffee. This was one of the milestones that was identified as being successfully complied with. And the Court of Auditors has told us that the coffee system was actually not as operational as it should be in order to be signed off under the milestone principles. We've had some discussion on that. When is a milestone actually satisfactorily achieved? The Court of Auditors had had some critical questions and the Budget Control Committee took up the critical questions and raised them with our interlocutors. And we have certainly seen that the system is up and running. We had very interesting exchanges of view. This is obviously a very new instrument, and it is complex to implement. It has been complex for the European Parliament to identify any issues. It doesn't have any rights to access the system any more than the regional parliaments do. And therefore, in terms of the legislation, we have had to operate really within the powers given us to uh, under the budget discharge procedure. The Court of Auditors ha has a role and we have a role to access information and data with that role. And so that is the basis on which we could access information. We did have some complicated discussions until we had all acquired a basis of information on a reciprocal basis and we understood that the recipients are the member states. But of course, the Budget Control Committee can't be happy being told the recipient is a member state. That is not adequate because as Budget Control Committee, we have to see whether the taxpayers are getting value for money. And 700 billion is a huge amount of taxpayer money. Whether this is actually being spent to the benefit of the broad majority of society, industry, stakeholders, the state and the administration. It's a huge task for us, and that's what we have to verify. And therefore, we have to be rigorous in this work. This brings me to the question from El País. This is the first time that we have actually focused on these points in this way. And it was initially suggested that we were not going to be able to have access to the tracing, to the tra to the trace of the money. And th this was therefore not going to be fully traceable for us. And I therefore said, I'm going to be at a press conference with 50, 60, 70 journalists who are going to be asking me about the traceability of funds and whether it's actually gone to the final recipients. There are mines, and I'm going to say, yeah, there are mindsets and targets, but I don't know where the money is. That was never going to be a solution. And this is I think why people have picked up that particular comment that I made. As a result, we exerted some pressure in our capacity as a Budget Control Committee on the authorities to try to resolve this dilemma. And the Commission is therefore now working on the details of an interpretation tool which shows exactly how milestones are to be interpreted and what the sub 
targets are within a milestone that have to be completed and how the completion of a milestone actually has to be evaluated. It may be done in a different way in Spain from how it would be done in Italy, but we will certainly have clear standards and clear procedures which are completely transparent so that there can be no reproaches and so that we can be absolutely certain that the methodology is appropriate. And absolutely on cue, the Commission has said that the methodology it has put together will be published and this is something that the Budget Control Committee welcomes very warmly because it will facilitate our work and that of the Court of Auditors no end and facilitate our ability to evaluate the traceability of funds and to track where they have gone. As far as the delegation is concerned, we feel that transparency is of the essence. It is critical to be able to follow not only the paper trail but the money trail. For example, we've had statements that there are outflows and if the Commission talks about outflows, then that means the money that has gone to the Member States. Our question is then, OK, the money has gone to the Member State, but what have they done with it? And the Member States has said, we have spent X billion, we gave it to the uh, uh, autonomous regions. That's our outflow. And so then we have to go to the level below and say, well, where has this money gone? This is why we need to have access to the data. We need to have access to the data in detail from the digital system because otherwise we can't get any kind of comprehensible overview where we can really see that the money has gone, for example, into the health sector to particular projects or within a region what sector the money has gone to, what the priorities are for the various regions, whether the money has gone to projects where it's been well used. We really need this in order for competent political decisions to be taken and to be justified. And if we want to be, if we want to have coherent, competent policies, we need to know what has happened, what has been done, what was the added value, has it been properly reviewed, is there an added value at a local, regional and national and then at European level, indeed, is there also a potentially a cross-border benefit? And we can really only do that when we can see what projects are in place, what money they're getting, if they're across border projects. There have been some studies which have shown that there are there's a plethora of nationally structured projects, but few trans uh, few cross border ones, and that's a, a potentially critical point that, that was raised at one point. The intention of the RF is not to have national pro national programs, and it wasn't really a, a intended as a criticism, but rather more as an observation of potential for the future that cross-border projects could deliver added value. As to the milestones on the pensions reform, this has a number of implications. It means inter alia that we have the new methodology for interpretation which the Commission has just published. This requires that there be a discussion with the Commission in the first instance as to whether the requirements have been met, whether adequate sustainability will be delivered whether adequate social stability will be provided, whether it's sustainable for the requisite time period into the future. This discussion is currently underway. The milestone had been set at the end of December and it hasn't as yet been fully attained. The Minister took a huge amount of time yesterday, way more time than was allocated for the meeting. He was extremely open, frank and sincere. He was ready to answer every single question. He was absolutely confident in the next month the problems would be resolved. I'm obviously not going to take that for granted, but I do realise that that clearly is a commitment to ongoing discussions between the Commission, the Government and the Spanish Ministry, and I'm sure that the work will continue on these open issues to resolve them so that the milestone is attained as rapidly as possible. The Spanish government obviously realises what the implications are. There will be payments implications if the milestone isn't attained, but I don't think that this is really very likely to be the final outcome because all of these uh, issues are quite time consuming and the Spanish government is and this minister is completely committed and engaged to delivering the reform, albeit difficult because of the divergent views of the political parties, but we're sure that there will be a reform. As to blocking funds, there is no prospect of that at the moment. It has not been mentioned and it is not intended because these sorts of questions are always right. Thank you. Bueno, muchas gracias a todos. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you.
for your interest. Thank you.